All right, good evening, church family. Are we doing well? God is good. Yeah, there we go. You're supposed to say all the time, God is good. There we go. Amen. So on Wednesday nights, we've been walking through a a series that I uh, created about what is so awful about pride. And last week, um, we kind of unfolded the fact that pride causes you and I to become delusional from the perspective of just completely ignoring the reality of how dependent of beings that we are, okay? How dependent we are. And I gave a few examples, right? And they came out of my life because I had had a big lunch last week and I was fighting, just falling asleep all afternoon and like needing a nap, right? That's, that's the kind of uh, creatures that we are. Um, or the fact that even though the sun is millions and millions of miles away, we can't look at it without going blind. This is how dependent of beings that we are. And we become delusional in that fact. Pride is blinding. It keeps us from seeing the Lord as he is and instead exalting ourselves. Uh, but I made a promise at the beginning of this series, and that is, uh, because we do call these recharge, like it, it won't be particularly recharging if I just beat us up for you know, the entire semester. So um, in light of where we were last week, <clears throat> I wanna point us to Psalm chapter 50, because Psalm chapter 50 is going to... Uh, It's going to pick up on this theme, but it's going to show us where we can focus and the kind of God that he promises to be and what he desires from us. Okay, so listen as I read, beginning in verse 7, it'll be on the screen, or you can pick up the Bible in the pew rack in front of you. Psalm 50, verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. I do not reprove you for your sacrifices, and your burnt offerings are continually before me. I shall take no young bull out of your house, nor male goat out of your folds. For every beast of the forest is mine, the cattle on a thousand hills. I know every bird of the mountains and everything that moves in the field is mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell you, for the world is mine and all it contains. Shall I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of male goats? So pause right there. You know what's so delusional about pride? is it causes us to not only overestimate our view of ourselves, forget how dependent we are, and pretend like the entire universe uh, revolves around us. Look at what it causes us to do to God. The God who spoke everything into being, who is from eternity past, okay? That blows your mind. Well, what about before that? Well, what about before that? Well, what about before that? He was. I don't know what else to tell you. He was. He always has been. Eternal. But here, he says, you guys, with the sacrifices of Old Testament Israel, you're acting like I'm hungry or thirsty, like I need this to make myself feel better. In some form or fashion, you are acting like I am a dependent being. That's how delusional pride is, guys. It causes us to look at the eternal God and make him like us. It switches. We try and make ourselves like God, and then we try and make him like us. But instead, I told you I wouldn't just harp on the negative. Listen, but instead, look at what he says. Verses 14 and 15, this is what God calls us to instead Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Of thanksgiving.
living and pay your vows to the Most High. And call upon me on the day of trouble and I will rescue you and you will honor me. Look at the two things that God desires from us. When, when pride is push to the side and when you come to him as he is, look at what he wants. Thanksgiving. Why? Well, one, in the context, he's the owner of it all. He's the owner of it all. And he has shared with you. Okay? Pride says God owes me. But in reality, he doesn't owe you anything. Rather, he has freely given. And the idea of being thankful is the way to lead your heart against pride. Do you have things to be thankful for? Yeah, too many to count. Pile it up. You have abundance. You have so much to be thankful for. And God says, listen, you know what kind of offering I want from you? Come to me with a thankful heart. That is where we begin. That is where we begin. With thanksgiving. Lead your heart, not into entitlement, but lead your heart into thanksgiving. Then the second thing he says, call upon me. Call upon me in the day of trouble and I will rescue you and you will honor me. In other words, he's the hero. He's the superman. Pride is the idea that we're the hero We're the center of the story. But in reality, he is. He is the rescuer. He is the savior. Listen, pride is the number one reason to not come to saving faith in Jesus Christ. The number one reason. That's where we started this entire series. Pride is what prevents man from coming to the Savior. But when you realize he is the one who gave his son, that he is the one who did it all, did it all from eternity past, when was the plan formed? Then. And he knew you from eternity past. And his spirit called you. And his spirit Open your eyes to see the truth of Jesus Christ. And his spirit wooed your heart. Okay? So he gets all the credit. And you know what the scripture then teaches after salvation? That you and I as Christians would say, yet not I, but Christ in me. In Philippians 2.13, that says, God is the one who is at work both to will and to work in my life. God is doing it all. You see what begins to happen when you look through salvation, when you come to God? God is the rescuer. Jesus is the one who gets all the credit. He is actually the one that, that opened your eyes and then he is the one that propels you afterwards. It is always him. And suddenly, as he increases and we decrease, amazing things happen, right? Real worship of God. There is nothing better in all of creation than understanding his place and your place under him. And pride wants to steal that from us, but we will not let it. We will be thankful, and we will trust that he is the rescuer, 
And we will call upon him and declare to him that we need him at all times, most especially when we are in trouble. Will you pray with me? King Jesus, we pause right now to say thank you. Every one of us in our hearts, church family, I want you just to begin to list in your heart and say thank you to God for all that he has done. Do you have a home? Then thank him. Do you have a job? Then thank him. Do you have more than enough of provision and food? Then thank him. Do you have breath in your lungs? Or there is so much that you delight in this world? Then thank him. Do you have a spouse? Do you have children? Do you have family? Do you have loved ones? Then thank him. Is there so much that you delight in? Then thank him now because he is the one who owns it all. And he has abundantly provided and shared and we must thank him. And King Jesus, we also declare that you And you alone are the rescuer. You are the one who saved us when there was no way that we could save ourselves. When we were your enemy, when we were fighting against you, that is when you went to the cross. And we praise you for that. You are the great rescuer, and you continue to rescue. Your spirit is inside of us, and you continue to rescue. You continue to give us grace upon grace when we do not deserve it, but your grace is sufficient for today. And you continue to allow us to abide in you and to persevere and to overcome obstacle after obstacle when we do not deserve it. You are the rescuer, and you will continue all the way until the end, all the way until eternity. Our faith is guaranteed and secure all the way until the day that you return. And then even when you return, we will spend the rest of eternity having grace upon grace and having your mercy unfolded for us, none of which we deserve, but we will declare that you and you are alone are the rescuer, and we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, God bless you guys.